It's a gas electric hybrid. It flies for about three to five hours on a single tank of gas. This is the Skyfront Perimeter 8. Um, it's the first of its kind that the department has invested in. And in the future, Sergeant Brad Cup says the experimental drone may be the first first responder at a metro crime scene. We're trying to use this as our drone as a first responder aircraft so that we could provide uh, real time air support to our officers that are responding to calls for service. Um, they can see what the aircraft sees and we can also stream that video back to our fusion center so that they can view the video in real time. So if it's a large mass casualty event or, you know, an active shooter type of event, um, the people that are making the decisions that are running the operation can actually see what the drone sees in real time. Do you know of any other police departments using this? Uh, I don't. Um, there are a few that have uh, become interested in it uh, since they found out that we've been testing it. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it if it ca if this particular aircraft catches on in the near future. Already in use, says Sergeant Cup, is the Brink Lemur S. As seen here, the new drone can fly indoors and communicate with suspects without having to have a pilot in close proximity. So none of our officers are in danger while they're looking for a armed and dangerous suspect. Um, it also is equipped with uh, two way cellular communication. So our negotiators can actually call a phone number that's associated with the drone and be able to talk to the, uh, the suspect inside and try to negotiate a peaceful surrender. The scenario was basically there was a, a disturbed suspect that was inside. He possibly had a knife and was destroying the apartment. Through negotiations, they were able to talk the suspect down and the suspect said that he was laying on the floor, was complying at his hands behind his back. And in the past, you can see the suspect there. Um, in the past, we would have had no way to check if the suspect was actually doing what he was saying he was doing without having to put somebody into harm's way to see if the suspect was actually doing that. And that technology can also break glass. A suspect that was uh, barricaded in the car with a knife, they wouldn't come out. Um, so we use the window breaking tool on the drone to, to breach the window so that we could easily communicate with her. The glass robot literally breaks down barriers to communication, says Sasha Larkin, Deputy Chief of Homeland Security at Metro. We've used it on maybe a suicidal subject or a subject that needs help or subject armed with a, uh, some sort of weapon. According to the National Nonprofit Treatment Advocacy Center, one in five calls to law enforcement involve a person who may be experiencing a mental health crisis. And while technology helps, human intervention remains crucial. So Clark County Detention Center is the largest mental health care provider in the state. Right? It's sad. Though. It is sad, but we're getting better. And listen, today we have community partners here with us like SafeNest where we really learned how to close the loop on calls because it used to be, and unfortunately Nevada always bears the title of being first, second, or third for domestic violence related homicides. Not a title we wanna carry, but by partnering with nonprofits like SafeNest, they're able to come in and give the victim the assistance, the attention, the support they need to get out of a dangerous, volatile, and often deadly situation. Any of this technology can help with that? Is there any? Well, listen, some, th some things require human nature, human touch, right? And that's what SafeNest does. So combined with technology, nonprofit organizations, plus the police and community support, I think we have a winning recipe.